Hey, Motor Man here, and today we're going to talk about the easy way to avoid most common motorcycle crashes. This is really common sense, but as they say, common sense isn't that common. So come on, let's take a ride. So first, you're riding in traffic like this, I'm coming up to a pretty busy intersection. I'm going to make sure that when I stop this motorcycle, I've got some room to go around the car in front of me in between the two cars to the left or in between the two cars to the right is going to be my choice because I'm back far enough and I'm able to turn the handlebars and go. Some people aren't so you better pick a side whether it be the right side or the left side because if a car is coming up behind you you hear those brakes squealing. What are you going to do? You got to get out of the way. Get up in between those cars and you'll be a lot safer. Another common sense tip. If you could avoid riding in somebody's blind spot, please do so. If one of the cars here in this right lane decided to come into the middle lane, first thing they're going to do is turn the wheel and you'll see that's the first place that's going to turn. You see that wheel start to turn, either get ready, cover your brakes, in fact cover both brakes anytime you're in traffic, and be ready for it. Same thing in the left lane, if that vehicle starts to come over, the first thing that's got to happen is their tires got to turn. So that's where you're focus should be if you believe that's going to occur. Don't ride alongside big trucks because if their tire blows you are in deep trouble. Those hunks of tires you see out on the street out on the highway we call them gators down here. If one of those hits you you are in trouble. So don't ride alongside. If you're going to pass somebody open that throttle and pass them. Get past them right away. It's the safest thing to do. If you could avoid riding in a pack of vehicles, do so. Either get up way ahead of them or slow down a bit, but don't ride within the pack. Here's another great tip. Look 12 seconds ahead of your path of travel. How do you know if it's 12 seconds ahead? We'll start counting. Pick something like the light pole over here. Start counting 1,001, 1,002 up to 12 and see how far ahead you're looking. So many people say, and I have heard this a million times, it happened so fast, there was nothing I can do. What that really means is I wasn't looking far enough ahead. I didn't have a plan in case something bad happened. Crashes don't happen all of a sudden. They unfold literally almost if you're looking far enough ahead in slow motion. We're coming to a four-way stop here. I'm not going to trust the other vehicles. I'm going to make my full stop. I'm going to look both ways and then I'm going to go. If there were several cars at that intersection, the first car that got there is supposed to be the one who has the right of way, but people don't pay attention. You better pay attention because your life depends on it. What's the hurry? Come on. You're on a motorcycle. You're having fun. You're outside. The sun is shining. The breeze is blowing. Relax. Take it easy. Don't be in a hurry. The other day, actually I was in my car and we're just cruising along. In front of me is a motorcycle and a, a panel truck. Now this motorcycle, we're going probably 45, 50 miles an hour, so not very fast. This motorcycle is tailgating the truck and it looks like He's looking for a place to pass, but it's a double yellow line and there's traffic coming the opposite way so he can't really pass. Now, if you're gonna pass in any situation, you should get back a little bit so that you have a view around the vehicle, especially with a vehicle like this was, a panel truck, you can't see around them. There's, a, there's no way you could see if you're two or three lengths behind that vehicle. You gotta, you gotta slow down a little bit and look around, see what's coming whether it be a passing zone or not, 
but if you fall back a little bit, you can see when that passing zone is coming up. So anyway, this panel truck suddenly jams on the brakes. This guy locks his rear brake and slides right on the ground. His front tire just touches the bumper of the, the panel truck. Now, by the way, I don't know what's gonna happen here, so I'm covering both brakes. Slow down. Didn't take but a second to do that. I had the right of way, he should have been looking, but never count on that. So this guy is wearing shorts, and he's scraped his leg, and then he burned his leg on the motorcycle. And I started thinking, well, why did that happen? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, he's following too close. Second of all, he's never learned how to stop quickly. He's used to driving his car. So what do you do in your car? When, when somebody stops short or stops suddenly, you jam on the rear brake. Or you jam on the brake. You only got one brake in the car. So you get used to doing that. And what happens on the motorcycle is you jam on the rear brake and you didn't lay it down. The bike went down because you locked the rear tire and it low sided. I guarantee if this guy had used both brakes and knew how to stop without locking the brakes up, he would have avoided it altogether and maybe learned a lesson about not following too close. But that's not what happened. Another thing you should learn about when I've done videos on this, counter steering, I'm gonna go around this turn, I'm gonna push forward on my left grip because I'm coming around a left-hand turn. The more I push, the tighter the turn will be. This row is now going to the right. I'm gonna stay on the right, the left side of my lane so I got a better view around the curve and I'm pushing forward on the right grip. That's counter steering. No other way to do it, There's no argument about it. It's simple physics. Push forward on the low side. You wanna tighten that turn up, you're going off the road. Right here, if I was going off the road, I'd just push further forward on the right grip of the bike. I'll lean more to the right and it'll go to the right. Back to braking. If you've got ABS, that's wonderful, but you should still practice your braking. I have students come to my class, they've got a bike that's a year or two old, it's got ABS brakes, and they've never practiced stopping quickly to see what would happen with ABS brakes. Now I'm gonna see if I can demonstrate this here because there's nobody behind me, so I'm gonna brake hard, downshift at the same time, and I could feel a pulsation in both the front brake and the rear brake. You might even hear a chirping sound if you brake hard enough, but that's not gonna be uh, that the brakes are locking. It might just be a little bump in the road where for a split second, that brakes or one of the front door rear brake locked up, but the computer can control it better than you can. So it's a no brainer to practice braking even from high speeds. If you've got ABS brakes, which I highly recommend anybody buys a motorcycle should get ABS brakes. It's a lifesaver. I'm gonna go into this turn, it says 10 miles an hour. I'm going to stay to the outside so I can see around the curve. I know people tend to fish on this little bridge, so I'm going, going really slow. If they're not paying attention, they can walk out in front of you, and then you'd have to jam on the brakes. Hopefully you'll know that if you use both brakes, you'll stop a lot sooner. And that laying the bike down is the worst thing you could do. If you lay the bike down because you pressed too hard on the rear brake and slid on the ground, you didn't do anything great. You crashed in an attempt to avoid a crash. It's physics. You lock that rear tire up. And if you're going 20 miles an hour or more, chances are the bike is going to slide out from under you. So practice your braking. What does it take, really? I mean, you could find a, a deserted road, empty parking lot. Practice braking starting at low speeds, 15 or 20 miles an hour, and work up to whatever speed you would normally ride out on the road. And here's the best tip I could give you. Get some training. I don't care how long you've been riding. You think you're an experienced rider because you've ridden 100,000 miles, or you've ridden for years. But as I've said a million times, to think about it what you're really experienced at 
just cruising straight down the road just like I'm doing now making nice easy turns like this and coming to a nice easy stop that's nothing to brag about folks anybody could do that the first day rider should be able to do exactly what I'm doing right now but if you can't lean turn and swerve quickly if you don't know which brake to use and when to use it the time to practice that is not when that car turns left in front of you in the middle of a busy intersection speaking of intersections that's the most likely place to get into a crash because there's so much happening at one time so slow down when you come into an intersection even if you got a green light don't try to beat that light across a busy intersection you're just asking for trouble slow down cover both brakes so that you're ready to brake if something happens you've already got your hand up on the brake by the way that's I'm wearing that half glove because number one it makes it easy for me to press the buttons on the camera number two it pisses off the motorcycle safety police on YouTube they've always got something to say but that's why I do it those two reasons so cover that front brake cover that rear brake just keep your foot poised over it and you should know that most crashes occur in fact at 20 miles per hour or less so that's why low speed handling is important whether you believe it or not you're maneuvering through traffic you need low speed handling And at low speeds, that's where you learn the proper use of your head and eyes. Wherever you look, wherever you turn your head and eyes, that's where the motorcycle is going to go. So you want to learn that at low speeds, where the worst that could happen is a tip over at 8 or 10 miles an hour. And usually that tip over happens because you're going below 5 miles an hour. And at low speeds is where you're going to learn to use the clutch and throttle, the friction zone. And when you're really new at that, you use a little bit of pressure on the rear brake. It helps to steady the motorcycle. It makes things a little bit easier. The better you get with the clutch and throttle, the less rear brake you're gonna need. And eventually you could eliminate that rear brake from low speed handling. That's what your goal should be. You can eliminate that rear brake when you're performing low speed maneuvers. Because you've gotten so good at coordinating that clutch and throttle. For more of these tips and tricks, Click on the videos above.